My name is Tom Emerson. I founded Praxis. Uh, I teach here, I train here, and I run the facility. I was always playing sport, I was always moving and I started training from a very young age. Around the age of 12, 13, something like that, I was doing some body weight strength training um, because I wanted to get stronger for, for rugby, right? And everyone at my school was interested in rugby, so that was the culture. It's like, get as strong as you can, get as big as you can, so that when you hit the other person, it hurts them more than it hurts you. Um, and then so by the age of 13, 14, 15, I was lifting weights and starting to build some muscle mass. Really it was injury that got me into movement practice. I had my first serious injury at the age of 16. Uh, that was a consequence of, well, I think a lot of sitting at school, um, which ossifies all sorts of things and creates a dysfunctional body. And playing cricket in the summer, rugby in the winter. So I was a, I was a bowler in cricket and lots of bowling was wearing away uh, at, the, at the lower back and then that got exacerbated on the uh, on the rugby field um, with contact and more intense movement. So um, I had a spondylolisthesis, which is mouthful. That's when one vertebra slips forward of the, of the one below it. Um, and there were two fractures associated with that as well. I was told to rest. Um, I was told to do all the things that you're told to do whenever you have an injury and you go see a, a physiotherapist. And it got a little bit better to begin with, but it got worse again as soon as I started playing and it was just kind of on again, off again, uh, problems with my back and then that became a hip problem. And from that point, I ended up in chronic back and hip pain for seven years. And so people hear that term a lot, right? Chronic pain. And people who have been in chronic pain know how horrible it is. And for people who haven't, you can just imagine the moment after you stub your toe uh, or when you've got a horrible headache, the kind of person you are in that moment. Like it's hard to be the person that you wanna be when you're in pain. Uh, it's hard to be optimistic about the future when you're in pain. It's hard to be happy when you're in pain. Um, and so people who are experiencing chronic pain are just in this difficult state the entire time. Round and round and round we go. I, I kept seeing different therapists. You know, conventional therapy was, was the route that everyone went down and so that's what I was doing. Uh, and the message I kept getting was, you need to be stronger here and you're too tight here. You're too weak here and you're too tight here. Uh, it might be, you're too weak in the glute, you're too tight in the hip flexor or whatever. Everyone's heard all these things before. Um, and I kept getting that message again and again, but often it was, you're too tight here. And then the next person was told me I was too, would tell me I was too weak there and I was too tight in this other location. And I realized after a while that they were just throwing up hypotheses, right? Like theories about what was going on, which is to be expected or what, what else would they do? That's their job. During that entire process, I just assumed that I would get better, that one of the therapies would work, one of the approaches would work. And then I had this epiphany one day that maybe I would not get better and I would just have these problems for the rest of my life. And that was confronting and scary and, uh, very tangible, like it felt very real and concrete, that possibility. Uh, and at some point I just, I came to the realization that I would have to solve the problem myself. Like why don't I come up with my own theories about what's going on? Uh, and why don't I just get strong and flexible everywhere? Side to side, baby, down in the hole. Above and the devil below him. So that's when I started uh, looking for different sources of information regarding what I could be doing in terms of my practice. Then I was really fortunate to be exposed to some amazing teachers. Um, in the beginning, my, by my brother again, Ben, who I mentioned earlier, who had experienced similar issues. He had back problems as well. Above, above, below. Ben had encountered a couple of teachers 
Simon Tarkor, who's based in Australia, and Ido Portal, who's an Israeli who travels internationally teaching workshops and so on. And I was really fortunate that Ben had encountered those people because then he exposed me to their work. Uh, and I remember I came back from a from a, a year spent in South America and I had kind of a clean slate. My brother said, hey, why don't you check out this movement stuff with me? Let's do some of Vito Portal's stuff. Um, he was getting online coaching and I started doing it too. That was five years ago when I started uh, practicing movement. And from that point, I, I began attending workshops, week-long events, um, both with Ido and with Simon, uh, and just sinking my teeth into that material. And before long, I could tell that it was working. Um, I was becoming stronger, I was becoming more mobile, and more importantly for me, I was the amount of pain that I was experiencing was reducing. And then I got to where I wasn't in pain all the time, and I felt like I had some more uh, freedom to not be too worried about my shoulder going out or not worried about injuring my lower back every time I did something, uh, not worried about injuring my hip when I played sport. And um, that was a completely like dumbfounding, transformative experience. Side to side, baby, back and forth, God above in the devil below you. And then from that point, I started asking myself, well, what if I just keep digging? What if I just keep trying to progress? My orientation shifted from, I'm just trying to deal with these injuries and get myself out of pain towards freedom. Like what potential is there? What possibilities are there that I haven't explored in my body? And so that's driven me ever since to, to continue practicing and continue learning new things. The handstand material became interesting and the more advanced strength work and um, some of the floor work that we, that we practice. Like in the beginning, I was like, shocked, oh my God, you can do this thing over and over and, and then you learn the skill. It's back to that story from when I was a kid, right? That you can just train, you can just practice and it works. Uh, so I'm not so surprised anymore, but it's just like, what, what will I turn my attention to now? Let's learn this new skill. Let's go into this quality. Uh, we have this narrative in our culture that the body is this entity that either causes pain or can look good or can do things, can't do things, um, and that it's separate from our real experience, which is a cognitive experience, a mental experience. Um, but through the practices, I started seeing how, how much the two things were, were interconnected, and not just those two things, but how is my movement affecting how I'm thinking, but how is it also affecting literally the way that I'm seeing the world around me? How is it affecting my interactions with other people? How is it affecting the way that I engage with the environment? And then on the flip side of those things, how can I feed those things back into the into the physical experience as well. So we've got these feedback loops just constantly operating between all those different uh, layers. And so for me, the movement practice is, is one access point into that structure of yourself. It's a self-exploration, it's a self-practice, it's a um, self-cultivation. How you're experiencing your body really bleeds out into everything. And I knew that from the chronic pain story that I told already, right? Because I was having a negative experience of being in a body and that was having a negative ripple effect. Uh, and through these movement practices, through the amazing things that I've learned from my teachers, I've developed this ability now to cultivate something at that center something physical that ripples out in a positive way. Who cares if I'm an amazing mover, if I'm a shitty person? It's more important that I turn the attention to those areas that are the most deficient and start to bring them up towards zero. Where it stops, nobody knows it. Regardless of what our minds would have us believe, we experience the world through our bodies. Even if you have an amazing idea, you have to type it out. You have to do something physical to express the idea. Your 
literal experience of the world, the way that you're seeing things, what you're hearing, um, what you're smelling, what you feel like you need, your cravings, get changed based on what you're doing physically. This connection that we can develop with the body allows us to become aware of the ways in which it's not serving us. Those parts of ourselves that we'd like to change that we don't realize are affecting us. So you walk past Subway and you get that smell of fresh cookies, right? That they're wafting out the door. And because you eat a lot of cookies, you have a desire to go get the cookies. And then you go buy some cookies. And before you know it, you've bought cookies and you're eating cookies. And then your mind says, oh, well, I, I deserve cookies actually because I've had a tough week or uh, really I need some energy because I'm about to go do some important work on my computer and so I need these cookies. Your mind comes up with a story for why your body did what it did. Um, and so just trying to change the story in the mind doesn't, doesn't work. We need to go into the body as well and start paying attention and bringing awareness um, to those cravings and where they're felt and where they're experienced because they're not just in the brain, but they're experienced throughout the body. What if I get strong and, and mobile everywhere? that turn into what if I become sensitive everywhere? What if I develop awareness everywhere? What if I feel for where the areas of chronic tension are that are turning me into a reactive person? And what if I learn to relax them? Because we know if you put a smile on, you become happier. We know that we can fake it. We know that we can consciously go into that unconscious circuit and feed some intention in there. And then that starts feeding it, feeding its way back. So I become a relaxed, calm, non-reactive person through the physical practice, right? And I used to be a very reactive person. Um, I used to experience anger all the time. And there's just a far clearer connection with what's happening in the body. And that allows me to intervene. As soon as I was learning and seeing that those things that I was learning were working, I wanted to share them. Uh, when I was in Berlin, I had spent a couple of months in 2015, again with my brother, uh, when I attended my first workshops and was really getting into the habit of spending a lot of time practicing movement every day. Uh, I started writing programs for some friends of mine who were, who were athletes. And then when I came back from that trip, uh, I had one year left to finish on my philosophy degree. So I was doing my honors year. And I decided to, even though I was studying in Canberra, I decided to spend some of that time in Sydney. And I was training at a gym just around the corner from my place. I started teaching there a couple of times a week. Uh, some of the gymnastic strength work that I was learning about, some of the handstand material, the mobility material. When I finished my degree, I moved back from Sydney to Canberra and had spent more than four years thinking a lot. I was studying philosophy. It's just thinking, <laughs> like that's the whole paradigm. But then I had this thought of like, okay, I've done a lot of thinking, let's just do a lot of doing, see what effect that has. And so that's when I really started hooking into my movement practice. I was already doing a lot, but I shifted to where that became my top priority. And upon moving back to Canberra, I started offering classes more open to the general public out of our little granny flat in the, in the backyard where we had a squat rack and uh, weight plates and some monkey bars, which were awesome and gymnastic rings. And we would fit 10, 12, 15 people into this room that was like seriously 20 square meters uh, and just get there in the middle of winter and get in and, and, and start moving our spines and wriggling about. My intuition at that time was that I couldn't be the only person in Canberra who wanted to train in this way. things are arranged in the world around you affects how you're arranged in every single way. And so I realized we needed a specific space for the practice where we would go away from my home, away from the park, and we would meet and we would practice together. And that that space would be built to cultivate the types of people that, that we wanted to become. In 2017, we found the first space. This was like a 90 square meter space, an old office building, and it was perfect for what we, what we wanted. And it turned out that the people I had intuited existed in Canberra did exist and that there were people who did want to move in these different ways and think in these different ways and talk in different ways. And uh, our little space there in, in, in Philip in the inner south of Canberra became that, a home for that. Our community grew over the next couple of years 
and then we moved into a larger space, um, twice the size that we had designed uh, to be the kind of environment we wanted with the kind of aesthetic we wanted to affect that experience that, that we wanted to have. We've created a space that cultivates, that uh, embraces that vulnerability, that experience of not being able to do something, but trying to do it and trying to do it again tomorrow. And then with time getting to where you can do it. And, it, and then it's a celebration with everyone. And that's what we're here for. That's what the space is for. If you're willing to learn, if you want to learn, you're willing to do the work and you'd like to become a better version of yourself, then this is the place for you.